Is it okay to ask questions about our faith? Is it okay to ask why? Is it okay to ask why we do something? I think not only is it okay to do so, I think it's absolutely essential that we ask, why do we do things? I think a lot of the issues we find in our church now are partly fruit of not asking why. If we don't know why we do things, then it all just looks a bit kind of superstitious and ridiculous. I mean, if we don't know the meaning of the meaning of any, any of our sacraments, like the meaning of, of the Eucharist, the meaning of baptism, the meaning of confirmation, the real meaning of marriage. If we don't know what, what it's about, it's all kind of ridiculous, really. I mean, take it or leave it. It makes no difference, though. I mean, it's got no real content. If we don't know what, what things are about, then very simply put, why would you bother? Why would you bother? So I think it's really important that we do ask, why do we do this? Uh, I think there may have been a tendency in the past to think that if I ask a question, I'm expressing doubt. Mammy, why do I have to go to Mass? Because you have to. There you go. Question resolved. Because you have to. There you go. Uh, but surely we can do better than that. Surely it's actually good to get back to, why do I actually need the Eucharist? Why do I need Mass? Does it make any difference to me at all? It's actually good to ask questions. Uh, if, you, if you can think of the, the beginning of the, the Gospel of Luke, where the Archangel Gabriel appears to uh, two people, Zechariah and Mary, telling them more or less a, a similar message, that both will conceive, well, not, Zachariah's not going to conceive, but his wife will conceive in a somewhat miraculous fashion, and Mary that she will conceive in, in a miraculous fashion. Okay, now, both do an interesting thing. Both ask a question afterwards. Mary asks, as we know, how can this come about since I'm a virgin? Or how can this come about since I have no knowledge of man? And the Archangel Gabriel replies, and it's all fairly friendly. Uh, Zechariah asks a similar question, but there's, there's a key difference. And the reaction of the angel is quite different. Uh, Zechariah is struck down dumb until he eventually writes on, on the tablet, uh, his name is John. What was it? in Zechariah's question that was so different to Our Lady. Zechariah asks, how can I be sure of this? I'm an old man and my wife is well on in years. How can I be sure? So Our Lady asks, how can this come about since I'm a virgin? As in, I want to do your will. I just, I, I, I know I'm called to be a virgin and yet you're asking me to be a mom. I just, uh, how, am I, how can I do both? I don't know how to do this. I want to, I want to do your will though. Just, just show me how I can do both. I, I don't know how this works. Whereas Zechariah is looking for absolute surety. Which when we come to the faith, it's something, I'm not sure if we can demand of the Lord that he show us with absolute surety something. Why? Because I think there'll always be the need for faith. Where we can absolutely, we, can, we should absolutely ask questions of our faith. Okay, So this is a, a simple little indication here. Here we have superstition. Superstition has no reason associated with it, right? There's even a friend of mine who uh, has some property, and he knows that he can never rent a house if the house has number 13. So it's simply, if you, most housing estates, I'm not sure, I've never lived in a housing estate, but I, I, I think in a lot of housing estates, it goes 11, 12, 14. Right, they skip house number 13. Now I'm not 100% sure, remember the, when we came to the, the year 2013, that was the year the number, the number plates came in with 13, 1, 13, 2. Now, I'm not sure if that's coincidence or if just people didn't want 13 on their number plate, like insurance premiums would have gone through the roof, or I don't know. Uh, but like, and just imagine from the perspective of reason, 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 reason. You see a black cat, and because of this black feline, your exams will go worse. Your investments might go down. You're more probable to have an accident because you saw a black cat. Now, cats are evil, we know this, but, <laughs> but the chances of a, 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 any black animal, for that matter, unless it's a charging bull, if there's a bl charging black bull coming at you, the, the chances are that won't end well. But a black cat doesn't make, a, you walk under a ladder, right? A climbing device leaned up against a wall. And because you do so, this is now going to 
increase your chances of an accident or something going wrong. Now, again, if there's a builder above and he has a bucket, there is a greater chance something's going to land in your head. But apart from that, it's entirely unreasonable to think that a black cat, a broken mirror, or walking under a ladder can have any effect whatsoever on your day. Don't get me started on horoscopes that rocks millions of miles away can cause you to meet the love of your life. Like, this is, this is actual insanity because it's got nothing to do with reason whatsoever, okay? So that's superstition. Our faith is not superstition, okay? Faith, now we have reason. This is where reason is supposed to kick in. So we start looking logically and rationally at things and piecing the bits and pieces together. So from Scripture, what does Scripture say about God? Is that fulfilled and lived out in the lives of the saints? Uh, what does it look like when, when, it's, when it's translated into the real world? Were these people exempl exam exemplary in their own personal lives, the saints? Um, so does, does the gospel work? Uh, were there miracles? Were there, were there proofs of, of all of this? Okay, reason. That's just reason. But now we have this interesting step to take, which is we've gone from superstition to reason. And there's always going to be this point where we have lots of good reasons, lots of evidence. But at the end of the day, faith is beyond reason. Faith goes beyond reason. Reason can bring you to the threshold of faith, but faith goes beyond it. So superstition precedes faith and, sorry, superstition precedes reason and faith supersedes it. It supersedes it. So our faith is, it's, it's up here. It, it, it supersedes it. It goes beyond reason. It's not unreasonable and it is not superstition. Absolutely not. It's the fruit of asking questions. Who's one of the most famous question askers in, in, in Catholic Theology, St. Thomas Aquinas, everything started with a question, questio, and away he'd go, question, do we, why, why is there a God? How is God? And he'd define all of his terms and ask more and more and more questions, and keep going back, he's like one of those three-year-old children, why, uh, why is the sky blue? Because um, God made it that way, but why? Because it has to do with the reflection of, of light beams, why? Because blue light rays um, have the same penetrative value as red light rays on the spectrum so they get stuck in the atmosphere and therefore the sky remains blue. Why? Because a red sky would look really scary. Okay. <laughs> well, it's actually good to ask and go back and why and why and why and why because then you begin to understand. Now, this is also what St. Paul did. You know, he, was, he wanted to know the law. As we as Jews, what do we believe? So off he goes and uh, becomes a Pharisee and studies the law, studies what we believe. And our law clearly teaches there is one God. Here comes this Jesus guy, says he's God. That can't be because we believe there's one God. So I'm going to persecute this church. And he does. Now, he regrets it. And I think he's right to regret it. But the point is, maybe he was, he was just looking for the truth. He was looking to defend this faith that he believed God had given. And these laws that God had given. And then in this miraculous way, he discovers the truth of who Jesus is. And once he finds the truth of who Jesus is, he never looks back. I love this line from, from Romans, Romans 8, 18. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are as nothing compared to the glory to be revealed to us. And he did suffer. Imprisonment, scourgings, floggings, general beatings, shipwreck, uh, failure. He preached to people and they said, nah, we don't like it. Don't like your message. It's just the general failure. I mean, I have this love of the Lord that I want to transmit to people, and I go and I give it everything, and they say, not interested. Okay, we'll go to the next city. So he, he knew all of these things for love of the Lord. And it's just, it's just, it's wonderful to see how a mind that searches the truth, a heart that searches the truth, I think the Lord will always honor it. The Lord will reveal himself to a, a heart, a person who sincerely searches the truth. So, yes, please ask questions about the faith. Like Our Lady, how can this come about? But not so much like, like Zechariah who says, you know, I have to know with surety or I'm not going to budge. That's like trying to apply science to faith. I mean, kind of weigh faith. Uh, where does it reside? What are its quantities? What are its dimensions? How about God? Can I find an objective proof of the existence of God? <laughs> Can a flea on the back of a dog prove that the dog exists? 
Can a flea on the back of a dog prove that the dog exists? Like, you know, trying to reduce God to something that we can scientifically measure is ridiculous. Because he goes way beyond it. So faith goes beyond reason, but it's not contrary to it at all. It's good for us to ask questions. It's good for us to understand our faith. Please do. By the way, a little clarification there. Please do, but from good sources. Okay, don't look up Wikipedia, because it's, like it's collective ignorance. Right? And don't look up atheist sites to see what all the arguments against the existence of God are. Look up good Catholic answers or Catholic.org. There are good sites out there. Look up good, good sources. And inform yourself. Learn. Why do we believe that scripture is the inspired word of God? Why do we believe in the Eucharist? Why do we believe Our Lady deserves such honor? Why do we believe in the power of prayer? Look it up. It's all there. We've been doing this for 2,000 years. We, we know what we're doing. We know why. So on this day, in which we remember the conversion of St. Paul, this great apostle to the Gentiles, this great man in search of the truth, may we, like him, find our answer and our peace in Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life.